What's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> I, I don't talk like that, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm actually from Northern Ireland. Oh, cool, all right. Well, we're all here, okay. Who's watching the shop? Uh, <laughs> I am from Northern Ireland, so uh, I really quickly just like to say sorry about all of that as well. Um, <laughs> I know we're not like the good Ireland. <laughs> I know we're not. <laughs> 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 I know internationally speaking we're still get out of the fucking car <laughs> that's what it's like back home it's just I'm going to shoot your dad <laughs> and you're like Jesus Christ mum <laughs> thank you thanks very much uh, that's my joke so uh, it's very nice to be here it's nice to be in Liverpool just before I actually start right for, uh, who's from Liverpool give me a cheer if you're from Liverpool yay okay cool can I ask you guys a question, right? If you're talking to someone who's not from Liverpool and you tell them you're from Liverpool, yeah? How many times out of 10 do they go, fucking Liverpool! Oh, Constantly, right? It's been happening to me for one week, I'm ready to fucking shoot somebody, right? <laughs> it, all week, people are going, Mick, what are you doing this week? I'm going on doing some gigs in Liverpool. People are going, fucking Liverpool, fuck what do you do? Don't you know, fucking Liverpool, mate? <laughs> fucking Liverpool. I'll, te I'll, 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 I'll take it from here, you're all right. <laughs> it's fine, it's kind of good. I know what I'm doing, don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the help. Uh, <laughs> it's the thing. I've been all week, all week people doing it to me. Doing, honestly, doing the same thing. Fucking Liverpool, do you know? Don't you know? Right? And I've realised it only happens in two places in the entire world. It happens here, and it happens in Birmingham. Okay? And I know that for a fact because when I said Birmingham, half of you in your head went, "Oh, Birmingham, fuck <laughs> it, I love Birmingham, me." Eh? All right. That's what, every time I'm gigging Liverpool or Birmingham, it's the same thing. Fucking Liverpool, fucking Birmingham. Do you know what? From now on, if I'm gigging in Liverpool or Birmingham and people ask me where I'm gigging, I'm saying Pakistan. Because <laughs> nobody has the balls, do they? <laughs> I mean, Brexit's coming up, some of you fucking do. Um, it's, like, it's nice to be out, you know, I, I like to travel quite a bit. I, um, I turned 32 this year. I, I also don't think that Irish people are supposed to leave Ireland. Um, we don't really belong in other parts of the world, you know? Like I, I was traveling around mainland Europe last year, spent two weeks traveling around mainland Europe. I uh, just went over there just to say goodbye. <laughs> we, we Brexit joke for you, thanks England. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, war's over, it was a draw. Uh, <laughs> second one's gonna be a belter. But I, I, was, I was very, very anti-Brexit, very anti-Brexit before I went to Europe. And now that I've been there, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not so fucking sure. Because I've seen something out there that terrified me, okay? I was in 15 different countries over like a two-week period, okay? And in every single country I was in, every one, the bathroom light switch was outside the bathroom. <laughs> and folks, that is a level of trust. <laughs> I, I just can't get on board with. I'm sorry. <laughs> Where I come from, that'd be a team-building exercise. <laughs> You'd be at work, you have to see how long it takes before Margaret from accounts goes, fuck it! <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I turned 32 this year as well, which is, uh, isn't old, but again, I'm from Northern Ireland, so you know, six months left. And um, I uh, turned 32 and got fucking fat, like, overnight, okay? Any man in the room, if you're worried about your health, there are some signs to look out for, okay? One sign I noticed is if you ever catch yourself one day running down some steps like this. <laughs> Sisters, I'm with you. <laughs> If, you, if you're brushing your teeth as a man without a shirt on and you spit toothpaste out and it lands on your own tit, it's time to hit the fucking gym. All right? I'm one of those people. I actually exercise quite a bit. Yeah? I, I exercise until somebody notices I've been exercising and then I stop exercising. Yeah? And I've always told people, I tell people I've got what's called a Celtic physique. That's, that's what I tell people, yeah? Celtic physique, you know? I've got big shoulders, a big chest, a bit of a gut, but it's a Celtic physique, you know? Like, I'm prepared for peace, but ready for war. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was talking to a friend of mine recently, ladies and gentlemen, and he told me that I look like a giant midget. <laughs> and I should have been upset about that, but I went home and checked. He was fucking bang on. Like... <laughs> It's kind of hard to take yourself seriously when you realize you're Snow White's eighth fucking friend. Like, <laughs> it's weird though for me that I'm uh, 32. Don't have, any, don't have any kids. Like, we have any parents in tonight when we got kids? Yeah, yeah, you sound fucking thrilled. <laughs> I don't have kids, which I know was weird for a man from Northern Ireland to be 32 and not have children. Okay, I know statistically speaking, I should have like a 45 year old granddaughter at this point in my life. 
But my, my friends are having kids, and I think, I think when your friends start having kids, first of all, I think it's quite selfish, okay? Because my friends didn't ask if it was okay. They just started fucking having kids, right? And when your friends start having kids, they'll start saying things to you they've never said before. You know, things like, I have a fantastic idea. How about next Saturday, yeah? Next Saturday, you come to our house, yeah? Yeah, you come to, yeah, four fucking buses, yeah. You come to our house, and we'll have a little drink. How does that sound? Yeah. So you get ready for your little drink, don't you? You bring 47 cans. That's what you and your friend used to fucking drink, isn't it? Then you get to the house, you hit the doorbell, the front door opens, and there's something standing there, ladies and gentlemen, and it looks like your best friend, but it fucking isn't. It's just this big grinning body snatcher just staring at you like... <laughs> He's like, I've just put her to bed. <laughs> Do you want to come up and have a little look at her? <laughs> and you're like, ha, 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 no. But you're a good person, aren't you? You're a good person. So you go, you okay, madam? You're right, right. You go upstairs. You go upstairs with a little baby in a crib and you're looking at it. And you don't know what to do. You don't know what to say. So you panic. You start saying the same things you say at a funeral. Like, oh, yeah, she looks peaceful. <laughs> my, my best friend has two kids, right? He's got a six-year-old daughter and a two-year-old boy, right? And one of the things I've learned about myself since he started having kids is that I don't have the ability to love a child. <laughs> just, I just don't have it, right? I don't know, we've got parents in the room, we've got parents here going, Mick, you don't know what it's like the first time you see a life form come from another life form and it wraps its hand around your pinky and it's so strong. Oh, it's so strong. <laughs> I don't give a fuck, right? I, I can't be proud of my friend's kids. I went to see him a few weeks ago and he... <laughs> Is that your real laugh? Like, I hope you're never fucking happy again. I suppose. <laughs> it's all right. It's fine. I am hilarious to worry about. Uh, but, but my friend, right? He's there. <laughs> the drugs have kicked in. Fucking thanks for coming. <laughs> we need to get this, but it's going to be even better. I, I um, My friend, he had his little six-year-old. <laughs> am I doing a funny accent or something? Am I... <laughs> That's how I fucking... I am um, at my friend's house, right? At my friend's house with his little six-year-old daughter, okay? I got there, my friend, he was so excited. He said, guess who just got 10 out of 10 in her very first spelling test? And I was like, if it's your wife, I'm fucking leaving. <laughs> and then he turned to his little girl. He said, sweetheart, would you like to spell some words for Uncle Mickey? And she was like, yeah, I want to spell some words for Uncle Mickey. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> did something. My pen, my friend pulled a piece of paper out, okay? Then he turned to his little girl. He said, okay, so we don't okay. First word, first word, spell jam. And she went like this. J -a -m. And my friend went, well done. And I went, what the fuck? <laughs> and then he said, okay, so we heard second word, spell leg. And she went, le. Uh, gah. And he said, well done again. And I had to sit through eight more of these fucking things. And at no point did anyone do what I wanted to do, which was just flip the table over and scream the words, that's not fucking spelling! She's just saying it slow, the cheating wee cunt! <laughs> which I know is aggressive, right? But all I'm saying is I'm, I'm worried about her. I'm worried about her because she's six now, okay? Not too long from now, she's going to go through school. Yeah? She's going to get exams. She's going to get exam results. And when people ask her about her exam results and she tries to tell them, she's going to sound fucking stupid. She'll be, she'll be talking to someone, they'll be like, I hear you said some exams. She'll be like, yes, I did. I did my joke, her, so us. <laughs> and how were the results? Well, I did very well. I actually did very well. Uh, I got three R's. <laughs> I got four balls. <laughs> I got a couple of cars. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm also slightly upset because I also got a duh. <laughs> you, 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 you got <laughs> You got a duh? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 what
did you get the dirt in? <laughs> Pear air. <laughs> <laughs> If I ever have a kid who comes home from school going, Jet out home, I'm gonna go, that's cute, try this one, fat our car. <laughs> I'll, I'll leave in this little thought. I, uh, I'm not, not a very sexually confident man, ladies and gentlemen. That might surprise some of you. Not a sexually confident man. Now, I will say this I'm an animal in the bedroom. I'm an animal. But I'm a pug. <laughs> I just lie there and can't really breathe. <laughs> And I think, I think the first time you meet someone, because ladies in the room, the girls in the room, you'll meet sexually confident men all the time, yeah? You'll meet some guy on a Friday, Saturday night, he's had a few pints, a few lines of personality, you know? <laughs> I'm not like that. I'll tell you this story. When I was, when I was 24, I had a girlfriend who was 31, okay? Because I lied on people. And um, we, were, we were in bed having a little cuddle one night. And she said, Mick, she said, have you ever done anything sexually adventurous? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm 24. I'm, I'm just really glad to see these, thank you. <laughs> she was like, right back at you, big fella. <laughs> and then the subject came around to anal sex. She said, Mick, have you ever tried anal sex? And I was like, well, I went to a Catholic school in Ireland, but nothing really happened. <laughs> Couple of love bites, no big deal, you know. And I asked her the same question. Now, she told me she'd done it quite a bit with her ex-boyfriend, and she actually quite liked it, and she thought we should try it sometime. And I was like, fuck, you're brilliant. <laughs> now, I forgot about it. Now, a few weeks later, we're on a, having a little hotel weekend breakaway. Okay, she paid for it, she was 31. And as we were unpacking our bags, she said, Mick, I saw an off-license down the street. She said, why don't you nip down the street, get us some drinks, we'll have some drinks in the room, and then we'll head out for the night. I thought, fantastic idea. So that's what I did, okay? And I came back about 15 minutes later, ladies and gentlemen, and she was wearing lingerie, okay? Now, to this day, I don't know how the lingerie worked. Because it had pants, but there was no bum. Okay? Like, it had leg holes and a front bit, but there was no... It was kind of like the underwear equivalent of a mullet. <laughs> like, business up front, fucking party out the back, yeah? And I looked on the desk in the hotel room, and she had brought with her loads and loads of different bottles of sexual lubricant, right? Fucking loads of them. I had no idea how many there were, okay? So all of a sudden, I'm looking at bottles of lube like I'm in an old wine cellar, like... <laughs> <laughs> and I picked one that sounded nice. So the lube that I picked for the activity, ladies and gentlemen, was called the Menthol Tingle Lube. A few veterans in. Good to see you. All right. Thank you for fighting for our freedom. Okay. For those of you who don't know, thousands of people across the world, maybe even millions of people, have used menthol tingle lube once. <laughs> Nobody's used it twice. <laughs> what it says on the bottle is this provides a menthol-y, tingly experience. What it should say is, warning, contains lava. <laughs> I put this stuff on, within three seconds I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure that was supposed to go on my chest. <laughs> Pretty sure this comes with a bowl of hot water and a tea towel. This is a, this is a cold and flu remedy I'm wearing right now. Now we began to begin what we were going to begin. The girl knew what she was doing. She knew what she was doing. She had done it before. She assumed her fighting stance. Okay? Woof, woof. That one. You alright? So here's the thing. It's good to see you again. Uh, I, at 24 years of age. Did you ever, did you ever be in a hotel room? <laughs> right? I knew got to the end. Do you ever be in a hotel room, right? You're having sex in a hotel, and you realize there's mirrors in the hotel room you don't have in your room at home, yeah? So with a 24 years of age, for the first time in my life, I saw the expression on a woman's face when she's in the doggy style position. And girls, it's not what I thought it was. <laughs> I thought there'd be some sort of desire, some sort of lot. No, she was, she was like this. <laughs> I'm going to say this right now. Say this right now. I know it's 2019, ladies and gentlemen. I know it's 2019. I know we're all woke, okay? But I'm going to say this. I think vaginas are made for willies. Bum holes are not. I think if you put stuff up your own bum, fair play to you. None of my business, okay? I think if you, as a man, if you put your willy up someone else's bum, well, sir, I admire you. Mostly because your hand-eye coordination must be fucking fantastic, right? Just as a visual demonstration, ladies and gentlemen, this is a willy going into a vagina. Easy, isn't it? Yeah. This is a willy going into a bum hole. <laughs> 20th 
25 minutes I was doing that. She started to get upset. She's like, hurry the fuck up. I don't know if any man in here has tried to maintain an erection when you're afraid, but it's fucking hard to do. And then something happened. Now what happened next, in my opinion, ladies and gentlemen, is the epitome of male privilege. Because eventually, eventually, my willy went into her bum. And she said these words. She said, Al, take it out. It's too big. Now. <laughs> I had never been told before or since that my willy is too big for anything. If anything, my willy's too small for my hand and I'm a giant fucking midget. She said, take it out, it's too big. I said, what did you say? She said, it's too big, and I ejaculated immediately. <laughs> that's the epitome of male privilege. At 24 years of age, I was complimented to orgasm. <laughs> it's never happened to a woman. You couldn't meet a woman, take her home, go see what we're dealing with. That seems fine. Have a cigarette, go to sleep. Doesn't work that way. Why doesn't it work that way? Well, I'll tell you why it doesn't work that way. And girls, you're not going to like this. But no offense, ladies. You're just not very good at taking compliments, are you? Think about it. Guys, how many times you're talking to a lady, she's got a new haircut. She's like, do you like my haircut? You're like, yes. It's not the end of the conversation, is it? There's questions. She's like, are you sure it's not too red, too long, too blue, too short? Yeah. A man gets a haircut, you like my haircut? Yes, correct, I'll be in the pub. Yeah. It's a minefield. As a modern man, it's a minefield we have to deal with as men. Do we tell the truth or do we just tell lies to have an easy life? I'll tell you this, I've got one sister. She's my best friend. Yeah? For my entire life, I've dealt with this thing. Do I tell the truth or do I tell lies? What do I do? Recently, my sister was wearing this dress. She said, Mick, what do you think of my dress? And I didn't like it. I thought I've got two options. One, tell her the truth that I don't like it. Two, lie to her, tell her she looks fine. I thought, you know what, she's my sister. She can handle the truth. So I said, I'll be honest with you, sis. I've seen you look better. And she started crying, throwing stuff. All this talk about how I ruined her wedding. <laughs> Listen, Liverpool's a lovely talking time, Mickey Bartlett. Thank you very much, Jerry.